We are here this morning with black and white coffee roasters. We have Lim Butler here to talk a little bit about his business. And so I do want to thank you, Lim, for coming on. We're going to call this the My Roseville Virtual Series. And so okay. series, we are highlighting our Roseville businesses, talking a little bit kind of what we're doing in COVID, you know, what we're doing um, as far as trying to get over this wonderful hump we like to call it in Roseville and other places, and kind of looking at what we can do to expand our businesses. So I'm gonna turn it over to you, Lynn. Just tell us a little bit about Black and White Coffee Roasters and kind of you're a new business to Roseville just before COVID hit. So tell us a little bit about the business, the history of the business, and also about you. Okay. Well, I started in coffee probably 17 years ago, 2003. I uh, just started in a small cafe and just kind of worked my way through the ranks of barista, manager, general manager, and wanted to take it another level. So I went over to the roastery where we purchased coffee, which was counterculture in uh, Durham, and started at the bottom. I uh, worked my way from bagging coffee in production to becoming uh, a wholesale customer support rep and doing a lot of education. Uh, education was really big at counterculture. and you know, I've always been a big fan of, of education and, and learning and, and advancing yourself in, in your field. And during, during that time, you know, I always wanted to open a cafe and I met uh, a buddy of mine, uh, Kyle Ramage, uh, back when he was working at Jubala in Raleigh. And both of us have been competing in these crazy coffee competitions. And uh, when I won uh, the United States Priest Competition in 2016, um, I mean, don't I flex on us. <laughs> don't flex on us. You know, I was about to, I was about to tell you when you say you started from the bottom. You know, <laughs> but the song popped in my head. Started now we're here. Now we're here. You know, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I wasn't gonna do that. But go ahead. I'm sorry. No, go it's ahead. All right. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's. Uh, I mean, we uh, we bonded a lot over this this coffee competition, and after I won in 2016, he wanted to compete. And I coached him and he won in 2017. So we're the only baristas in the Southeast to ever win the national wow. competition. I placed fourth in the world barista competition in Dublin, Ireland. And then he placed sixth in the world in Seoul wow. the following year. And we, we kind of hashed out this idea of a cafe. And uh, one of his former professors at the seminary in Wake Forest, he owned Back Alley Coffee Roasters. And he just wanted to teach and write books. So he asked Kyle if he wanted to purchase it. And this was our, our, our chance to do something a lot bigger than what we had planned. And we wanted to do um, something in the community in, in Wake Forest and expand that uh, as we grew. We wanted to create a, a community cafe and bring specialty coffee to that community and not exclude people uh, from this whole like idea of great specialty coffee. Because I mean, the average coffee drinker is gonna drink, you know, uh, cream and sugar or a latte. <laughs> we wanted to cater to those people, but also bring in uh, some of the awesome relationships that uh, both Kyle and I have developed over the years with coffee farmers, importers, exporters, and uh, bring these amazing coffees uh, to the area. Um, and last year, we had the opportunity to uh, open up a, a cafe here in Roseville. And this was our actual idea of a cafe because uh, Wake Forest was already established. We opened a, uh, a shop in downtown Raleigh, which was already established. We just kind of took over the bar. So Roseville was actually from the ground up, let's build a cafe that represents our views and what mm -hmm. we wanted to do and bring to the community. And uh, our, you know, the whole purpose of, of Black and White was to create opportunities for, for people in the industry because we felt that um, the people that we worked for uh, over the past you know, couple of decades, they pre presented opportunities for us and we wanted to do the same thing. And um, so our, our mission um, was to create exceptional coffee and keep it simple. Uh, so it would be more approachable. So we have these like really fancy coffees that people can enjoy. And, and your, your average coffee, um, you know, a, a nice bold coffee from Colombia that, that people can enjoy too. And we, we view everything and everything we do, our hiring practices, our, our green coffee purchasing with farmers, uh, how we roast coffee, how we present coffee in our cafes. We do it through the three lenses of our core values, which is um, service, community, and excellence. Uh, 
Um, we, we feel that we are in, you know, the service industry and hospitality has to be like number one. Um, and it, we, we, we figured out that, you know, these wonderful communities that are popping up around Raleigh, like Roseville, um, yes. they need uh, a, a nice community focused cafe and everything that we do, we, we're striving for excellence. Um, so uh, if you come to Roseville, you, you'll see three uh, uh, pictures on the wall from a local artist. And these are the icons of, of our, our core values, uh, service, mm -hmm. community and excellence. Well, I'll tell you, Lynn, so some of the comments, right? So when you first opened, like before you were open, we were kind of like those, I hate to call them, you know, we were like the little coffee stalkers. So we were, <laughs> right, we're watching and, you know, as the chamber, we, we have chamber members that are, you know, surrounding you. So we're talking to them, hey, what do you see? You know, so before you guys actually opened, we were kind of there peeking, seeing what was happening. And before you opened, I remember I was doing something over the course of whatever weekend or day and I happened to see it and I said oh my god so I put it out like everywhere and that morning when I got there your first day that you opened I'm looking at all of these people in line and we're all seeing in there and they're like oh hey Rachel thanks for your post and I'm like uh, <laughs> you, know? you know like we're standing in line we're kind of waiting and looking and things like that so some of the common comments that I hear about black and white, which is kind of interesting is, I remember I was in a meeting and someone said to me, they were like, oh my God, Rachel, like I I'm gonna go to black and white, you know, because they didn't want some of the other franchises, right? Oh. <laughs> this, this is real coffee. And, and for those of us who may drink a little bit of coffee or may get the tea, I actually get the hot chocolate. Yeah. <laughs> what time of year. I actually get the hot chocolate when I come in. And for those who really love coffee and those who are actually not really into coffee, I have found that your location offers something for everybody. It's yeah. not just, you know, if you're a coffee connoisseur, as some people like to say, if you are just coming in and you just want a good cup of coffee, you have everything that's there in the location. So let's talk about a little bit about COVID. So of course we had COVID to hit and like many other businesses and many other uh, all across the world, what were some of the things that you all did to adjust once COVID actually hit and we were under the executive order, um, stay at home, we're still in phase two of that. So what are some things that your business did to actually adjust to that? Well, we, we're very thankful that uh, coffee was declared an essential. Um, so mm -hmm. we, we approached our staff and, and we asked our staff if they felt comfortable um, uh, working and everyone felt comfortable working. So we, we came up with a curbside menu for all, all the locations. Um, and uh, we, we we're very uh, strategic in um, creating like specials. So if you bought food, you get a free cup of coffee. Um, if you bought a bag of coffee, you get a free cup of coffee. Uh, <laughs> so we wanted to make things uh, easier for folks and we wanted to make things uh, enticing and, and, and also create a, a respite because uh, people are locked up in their houses and, yes. and, and scared to come out. And we wanted to uh, kind of ease that, that fear a little bit um, and let people know that we are still here. We're, we're here for you. Um, yes. our, both Kyle and our, our main concern was not to, to make profits. Uh, we knew that we were going to take a big hit. And our main concern was to be able to keep our staff employed and um, just be that respite again for, for, for the community. And so that, that was great. Uh, it, it, it turned out great. Uh, uh, the cafe in Wake Forest uh, didn't lose much revenue and, and same here in, in Roseville. Uh, and one thing that we did learn, uh, being community was one of our core values. The community really yes. embraced us and that yes. was amazing. <laughs> yes. uh, even. Even our, you know, our wholesale with the, with the roastery, our wholesale online just dropped off probably like 80, 90% because a lot of cafes in the U.S. were actually closing. Mm -hmm. um, and, but our retail online went up 300%, wow. which was amazing because uh, we were able to rotate some of our staff from the cafes into the roastery to help with production and keep up with that demand. And, and it's just been uh, really amazing. 
So uh, kudos to the Roseville community yeah. for, for supporting us. And we really appreciate that a lot. Well, I will tell you one of the things that I love about this story and love about what you just said is we have, of course, here, if you've, you know, for those that have been in Roseville, we just rebranded the town of Roseville, just kind of did a rebrand and we created a new logo, a new slogan. And part of that is genuine community. And so I always talk to people about Roseville because they always, you know, a lot of people think we're so far away. You know, they're like, <laughs> Roseville. And I'm telling people, it's like, we're honestly like right down the road, you know, when you talk to people, but the part that we love about our community is the genuine community part. And so when we look at businesses and look at ways of how do we support businesses and working with the town, because I do work very closely with the economic development manager here in the town of Roseville, we want to make sure that we're giving our businesses opportunities. But I do know when COVID hit and talking to people and you talk about coffee being essential, when you're in the house for those that are stay at home parents and you are not getting that morning coffee. (laughs) (laughs) But there's also another section or another group that I think is um, had kind of changed the coffee game, as I would like to say. And that would be our next generation. So when I look at the kids who are my high school students, um, even my middle school students, they are also coffee lovers. Wow. So I looked and I saw a, a group of kids actually pulling up one day to actually come and get coffee. I said, that is kind of like that untapped market, I think, for some people. And I know some of the franchises will capitalize off of it, but there's some of the trends that I see. So I'm going to ask you a little bit about, you know, what do you guys do on social media? So are you guys on some of the things like TikTok or um, have like a snap? I know I don't do snaps, so I don't Snapchat. That's that's beyond me at this point. Uh, But I do look at how I've been looking at how some businesses have actually been able to propel themselves on platforms such as a TikTok, which is outside of what most of us use in the business world. A lot of people use Facebook because that kind of works easier for us, help us push and hit a couple of groups. And we're on things like Instagram and Twitter. I know that TikTok is fairly new and something that a lot of businesses are not necessarily embracing. So what are you guys, are you guys looking at doing things like that? Do you have your customers like, hey, take a picture, tag me, things like that. Are you guys doing any of those things or any of your baristas, you know, showing people how to make coffee or anything like that? Yeah. So I, I did a number of videos of, of how to make coffee. Um, I even uh, teamed up with Jettis Tea in Durham. Um, they have this awesome uh, uh, ingredient called golden milk. And I did wow. a, a video of how to make a golden milk latte uh, is really helps with anxiety. If you're, if you're, if you are trapped in a house for exper- extended period of time, um, you do have some anxiety of, of the situation happening now um, that would help. If you're wanting to brew better coffee at home, we did a video wow. about that. So we've been tagging uh, Instagram a lot. I actually set up a TikTok account, but I haven't really uh, <laughs> adventured into that. I'm an old dude. I'm 50 years old. So I'm, <laughs> <laughs> Lynn, we're not that far apart, so. <laughs> Look, we're not that far apart. <laughs> so I, I'm teaching myself some of the, okay. some of the, new, the new social media things that, that are popping up. Uh, so TikTok is coming. Um, but right now, uh, our brand manager, she's been amazing. Uh, just keeping up with Instagram, uh, Facebook. Uh, we have a Facebook store and Instagram store as well. So uh, those, are, those are some of the things that we've done. I've done a few uh, Zoom meetings, especially Coffee Association of America has uh, done uh, some, like, uh, what are U.S. roasters doing uh, to uh, combat COVID? Um, wow. And that was really cool to do that. Uh, I've been involved with uh, some other coffee events online. Uh, okay. There's been a, tons of Instagram live interviews. I can't even keep track of how many I've done so far. Uh, so I, all that to say has been uh, really cool of bringing um, attention to black and white. Yes. Uh, there's also a, a, a media group called Sprudge. Uh, they focus on only coffee and they've been really amazing in bringing uh, people to our website. And, and now how do you store. spell that Sprudge? S-P-R-U-D-G-E. Okay. Okay. Look it up. I'll look it up. Yeah. I, I have learned so much about coffee 
from watching your social media and for I will tell you, I told Lim up front. I was like, Lim, listen, I follow you on social media. I watch your things. We talked about DJing. I told him my brother was a DJ <laughs> and things like that. So it's always good to kind of get to know your chamber members and kind of get to know your business owners and things like that. But Lim, what is something that you will want the community to know about black and white? You know, for those who are here who have not come out yet and are looking you know, to try coffee or who have not been to your location in Roseville, what is something that you would love to say to them that they may not know or something that would say, hey, pique your interest to come see me? Well, we're, we're here not to compete or beat out the competition. Mm -hmm. uh, what we try to do um, is to create a brand that people feel the value in having that as a consumer, as a wholesale partner, uh, we want that brand to be something that they embrace and it becomes a part of their, their daily routine. Um, and, and that's basically it. It's something as simple as that. We're, we're, we're here to uh, be a part of, of your life. Genuine and transparent, I will tell you that. That's, <laughs> that's kind of what rings true to all of this. And I have truly um, enjoyed um, some parts of COVID, like many people, and then there's the not so much part <laughs> that I have enjoyed, but, but quality time that I have been able to spend with my family, I know has been really key and really important, um, taking value and just slowing down. And so yeah. quite a bit of time of just telling some of our business owners, you know, when everything first happened is, you know, how do we look at this cup as half? or how do we look at it as maybe one fourth empty or you know things like that to try out of how do we actually come out of this and so I will tell you I'm very proud to have black and white in the community I appreciate what you guys offer and what you do uh, for those who are not following you on social media and following the company I think that you're you're not only your social imprint but I think that your legacy will live beyond what you actually think you may have created and I've that in the jobs you've been able to create and also what you've been able to do in supporting um, some of the local farmers and actually some of the farmers for those that don't actually read up on businesses. Maybe I do that because that's just the nerdy geeky part of me. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's just what it is. But, you know, Lim, I'm definitely glad that we could actually chat this morning. I try not to make these too long because you know, people view them online, they're going to view just a couple minutes, a little snippet of it. But I do want them to get to know black and white and get to know actually our businesses here in Roseville, which is why we're doing this so that people can kind of put a face with the business. Um, for those that may not know and know that we are a community and we do um, embrace our small businesses, that truly is the lifeline of Roseville and kind of what this community was built on.